All right, guys, we are back. We are here in the semifinals. Boo, yeah. Congratulations are in order to everybody that has actually qualified. Although we don't know who's actually going to continue. Is it the top seed of Glorious or will it be the new contenders Clairvoyant? They are still battling it out. And the winner of that will go up against Cloud9 Vortex, the winner of the previous two best of threes that we did just cover. Today, however, we're going to be jumping in to a very hype matchup. This is a repeat of yesterday's semis, and these guys have faced each other time and time again. Symbiote Gaming, arguably one of the best teams on the NA scene, up against the Barrel Boys, a very highly sought-after contender as they're starting up this draft, Mr. Tetcher. Yep, and they are starting into the draft, and uh, not too surprising in general, but after getting out of the games we've just seen, a bit unusual, the first ban is going to be Tassadar weird why did my web why did my video not play my video is not playing there it is all right we fixed it uh first fantastar you say first fantastar indeed it's it's a bit weird um I you say weird seasons behind but it's dragonshire and you've been saying this time and time it again is. dragonshire it is, is his best map it is his best map but i still wouldn't ban him over someone like uh stitches or someone like that personally or nazibo who has been picked, both of the which uh, have been picked already. Yeah, uh, the ban after Tassadar was Zeratul, so again, another fantastic ban. We've been seeing so much Zeratul play. Uh, it really makes me happy. First pick, though, is going to be a false dead. So instead of, you know, those Valor first picks, we actually have a little bit of a difference of opinion there about who's best after Tychus. In this case, it's going to be that false dead. Now, that being said, Tychus is still picked immediately, though. Yeah. And yeah, he's going to go with the witch doctor. Picked best after Tychus is <clears throat> picked pre Tychus. Which is weird. Like, the only reason for this is due to the fact Tychus is so mobile. And on the Dragon Shara, being able to fly from a shrine to the mid lane to try and capture Dragon Knight or vice versa is very, very big. But, like you said, it is Tychus and Nazibo picked up by a. Uh, Jeez, uh, these guys are already done. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's rush Let's rush through this quickly. Valor Stitches is going to be joining uh, the Barrels. That leaves us into Brightwing and Arthas, which is then answered with a Kerrigan Malfurion. And the last pick, and I said, I, I told you, Symbio has been running this a lot, Zagara. Yep, finally, I'm happy to see it. So are we ready to go? Yes, we are We are ready to go. We can give them the all clear yeah. as uh, we'll stare at some of these pictures for a moment there. So it's Assassin Double Specialist for Symbiote up against the double, sorry, the triple Assassin straight up for the Barrel Boys. What do you think yeah, of that? This, this is <laughs> gonna be I, I don't know what to think of that. It's an intro. This is a a type of comp I've not seen before. This is weird. Welcome to Symbiote Gaming, my friend. <laughs> I like Symbiote Gaming already. <laughs> They've been the, the pioneers of so much cheese in this game. Um, it's really hard sometimes to just remember that they don't really play typically. They bring so many new talents and so many new combos to the table. Uh, I'm very interested to see how a double specialist comp will work out for them because it is the Dragonshire and the specialists that they've selected do have really good lane presence. They got great team fight potential Battle and the wombo that we can set up here is absolutely going to be massive. So Symbiote Gaming, ladies and gentlemen, on your blue, Dreadnought, Soldier, uh, KO, Arthlon, and Mad Timmy Mad heals on the right wing. And on the right hand side in the red trunks, it is Barrel Boys. In the top lane on Stitches, we have Fury. In the mid lane on the Valor, it is Base Drop with that money, money pick. And in the party lane, it is Equinox on the Kerrigan, Blinx on the Malfurion, and Trummel will be playing the Falstad with the Master Skin. Yep. Actually, yeah, is I... that Master Skin on Malfurion as well? That is, I think it is. Uh... With the, I think the, I think the skulls the Master Skin. The X, the horns give it away. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, All two Master skulls. Skins. <clears throat> Well, these guys play a lot, Freedom. and uh, when I say a lot, they, yeah, Nazebo has his uh, pretty pretty hot right there as well. Yeah, Fury with the, the crown, he's the king, so to speak. Angelic Vala and uh, yeah, regular Tychus there in the mid. In terms of the talents, look at the Zagara first pick, Demolition. Uh, they plan to be pushing very hard, and they can do this. They've already pushed the wave up with, like you said, the double specialist with both Nazebo and Zagara, they're going to push this up pretty hard, but Zagara has suddenly decided that she wants to leave just to place down some creep tumors, get some vision, and those roaches are actually going to spot Kerrigan there. 
Yeah, some really good placement of not only the wards, but of course your summonable units. They're they're like mobile little wards. Uh, so the creep tumors, you know, we don't really have that kind of option like other mobas do, but the Zagara can definitely put up a lot of map presence, a lot of map uh, control because of that. Even with the Nidus Worm later on, you can still use those revisions just by default. Yeah, this is true. They're good for vision. They're actually good for blocking off certain locations, which I've seen in the past. Mostly a solo queue trick, but it's kind of fun to see. Top lane, pretty much an even fight. Arthas and Stitches just dueling over minions right now. But currently, both shrines have gone over oh, to Barrel Boys. Oh, Blinks, those Bailings, all of them hit him. Valor, bing, bing, bing. thinking about going for it, but Tychus is there, is able to predate her. And we did see both shrines currently going over to Symbio Gaming. Yeah, Dreadnought did not win out that first shrine, but he was definitely winning the hit point battles up against that Stitches. And, you know, Arthur's versus the Stitches, if you don't sit in the vile gas that he generates, I think Arthur's is going to have a good time there. But Equinox not going to have a good time. He's getting body locked pretty hard here. Still alive, almost able to take down Mad Timmy. But it will be the first blood going the way of Kerrigan after all. And Arthlon, low hit points. Mad Timmy, low hit points. But a kill is a kill is a kill. Base but drop, though. Base drop's being chased down with the overdrive. One more hit! It's the Steph Coil that is able to take out the Valor there. And we did see Falstad immediately dashing away because he realized, oh god, this is very dangerous. I need to go back and get some help. But this is going to give Arphalon and K uh, KO a lot of freedom to just push this lane up. Yeah, and Dreadnought came down all the way from the top just to get that kill on top of the Valor. So he's back into the top lane. Uh, advantage in terms of experience has gone the way of SMG just slightly. And, you know, about a quarter of a level, but uh, Equinox is going to come up top. Dodge! The dodge from Dreadnought means that the Arthas is going to walk out of that one. But top uh, shrine is going to be held by the barrels for now. Yeah, Barrel Boys keeping control of that, preventing Symbio from grabbing their first dragon. Same in the bot lane, however. We are currently seeing Barrel Boys attempting to take it, but Blinks gets blocked in, but did not attempt to get out in time and was polymorphed on the way out, but it was not enough to prevent his escape. Second set of Giants have gone over to Barrel Boys. They're going to use this to defend the Giants of Symbiote. Was that the, the Trummel of a Bribe? I think it was. Yeah, it was. No, it, is. no, it, no it isn't. He still has two Bribes. Oh, no, it, yeah, he is. He has zero he Bribes deck. Yeah. yeah, I read it wrong. <laughs> he had two minions on his Bribe. Yeah, that's I, not exactly the same as two Bribes decks. Level 7s yeah. are coming out though, no, as well. You got Invenom there on the Zagara as well as that Rapid Incubation. So you're looking for that extra burst. You're looking for that lane present. Uh, anything else really kind of strange out and about? We do got the Gidbin here on our Nazebo. Usually here in NA, it's either going to be the Gidbin, the Mule, or Merclord, believe it or not. But uh, I think the Merclord craze is over. Yeah, Merclord is still nice to see now and again. And we still do see it quite a bit in the EU. But if you're taking Merclord, it's almost every single time going to be on a Anubarak Terminal. Get shielded just in time to keep him alive. And the push from Symbiote Gaming continues. Trouble having to be out. Arcane Shot almost picks him off. He's backing up Zagara. Maybe thinking about throwing some roaches over there. But they're not going to be able to get him in the mid lane, though. We're seeing a bit of a fight. Soldier being dropped low. Valor with the chase onto Dreadnought. But Arphalon comes in to dissuade this chase. And it's just going to hold this lane to get a bit more XP. Equinox, though, might be looking to change that. Yeah, but we threw down those roaches immediately into that bush and it saw him and he knew it. And yeah, uh, things are not really going the way of barrels. They've been putting up a lot of pressure on the map, but in terms of kills, they're still struggling. It's two kills, zero, and they're still about that quarter of a level down, which means that we're going to hit 10 first for uh, Symbiote. And that could be, depending on the situation at the time, a very devastating outcome. Yeah, but they hit 10 while going on the aggressive, which is what they're going to be attempting to do here. Yep, here they come immediately charging in while there is a minion wave being taken. Blix gets walled in by the zombies, heals himself though, and the shield is able to keep him alive. Level 10 was not hit though, which means any kind of counter attack coming from Barrel Boys will hit at level 10. Oh, the minion waves are just clearing. Zagara has grabbed the top shrine to prevent a Dragon Knight here. And there is level 10 coming from Symbio if they want to fight. Now's the time just before level 10s. Uh, up for Barrel Boys, but it doesn't look like they want to try and force it. They're just going to push up, tend to get a base drop, but base drop is easily out of there. Ult's now available for both teams. 
I'm, I think that was a missed advantage right there. I mean, Vala had free reign in the mid and didn't take down that dragon, but now Equinox is about to get robbed. He did get that level 10 before he did bite the uh, bullet, but at the same time, I don't think Trouble's actually going to be getting out of that one alive, and he is not. Two more kills going the way of Symbiote. You saw the strafe there just at the edge of the screen there from base drop, but both shrines now going to go the way of blue, and I don't think Vala can just hold this at all. He can poke it for a while. There. Uh... Oh Why? no, not if she has no mana. The, yeah, she, ha she has enough, I think, for like one more ability, but yeah. instead, she's just gonna die. Yep. And there she goes. So again, I think that was a big wasted thing. You know, you said that they're really going to go on the advantage and they pushed in the bottom and Vala had a very big opportunity to take a dragon and she didn't. And now the dragon is going the way of SMG and Zagara was able to do things and Curse Fury apparently actually kills out Zagara in the top lane. That must have been a hook into a gorge because he got hooked behind yeah. the lane. Yeah, because the corpse is inside the base, so I'm assuming that is what happened. You know and what? Wow, Ko has already lost almost all the yeah. health on this Dragonite. Barrel Boy is actually with the supreme defense. They take out the pressure top. There's no more pressure mid because Ko has no health on that. They lost one tower. I mean, they lost the gate bottom, but that was way before the Dragonite, anyways. Um, so overall, not not really a terrible situation for Barrels. No, they are holding up surprisingly well, considering the amount of uh, things that have actually gone wrong for them this game, and they're actually able to steal these mercenaries from Symbiote, which. Ko and Arthalon are going to have to deal with, but due to the fact that they are both technically uh, specialists with jungling abilities, they are able to clear that supremely quick. And in response to that, Barrel Boys are just going to take their own mercenaries. Yeah, and uh, this is something that Tuark had a lot of trouble with. <laughs> they couldn't take any mercenaries whatsoever. Uh, barrels do not seem to actually suffer that kind of same fate, but so we do got the Bruisers now pushing up into the bottom lane. This fort is basically on the menu because we got no uh, mules on either side. So a half health fort with lots of creeps pushing down on it means it's a very big target right now. Oh, but there's the hook of the Dreadnought, a major hook where the Ravenous Spirit does come in. And there is the Devouring Moor as well, which is still going to uh, be the, uh, come up at the time the Ravenous Spirit is still up and Fury is going to go down. Dreadnought comes out of Fury there and immediately turns onto Trouble. And that was a great fight by Symbio, just dominating that with using their huge AoE ultimates. And this is not looking good for Barrel Boys already. They've had to pull back into their base after that fight. Red being got quite low. The Maelstrom is not up, though, for Equinox. and still able to get the kill, though. Yeah, I mean... We started off that fight with the hook on top of Dreadnought, and even then they were able to take home three kills. Four, I think, uh, with Equinox. No, Equinox, he didn't die. His Maelstrom is actually is, is up. Either way. Yeah, it's up. I don't think it was up when he engaged, and he just cho or he just chose not to use it. Yeah, either way, SMG got initiated on. They were still able to turn it around. And, you know, that talent tier advantage came up pretty big. Because, uh, we just hit the 13 after, uh, during all that for two arc. Uh, sorry, <laughs> for Barrel Boys. And now we're actually looking at that level 16 now. It's uh, pretty eminent here for SMG. Yep, SMG about to be hitting that quite soon. But in the meantime, we are seeing them just hold the mid lane. We got a retreat ping from someone. I'm not sure who that was from. But Shrine's currently going a bit split for both teams. Neither team gaining the advantage there. Equinox using her pull to clear up some of the creep. So it is Maw, right? Yeah, it is Devouring Maw. There's no Nidus here this time, so it's not going to be a split pushing Zagara. But uh, Arthalon really does like the Maw because he does like to try to set up those Wombos. But uh, they haven't really needed oh, that Wombo pressure. Now with those 16 talent tiers coming in, look at this. Two stone skins. We got the Critterize and the Rewind there for the Brightwing. Not really a surprise. And the double Hunter Killer coming out for Zagara. Like those Hunter, those Hydralisks are just going to be massively annoying. Yeah, it is almost a direct counter to someone like Fala. Just double hunter killering on her, and suddenly she's pretty much disabled. She has to run away or clear them and use her abilities on them. Yep. That's always what I hated about Zagara, is just like the fact that you can get so much free damage and free pressure just from these TLA yeah. units. But hey, that's why uh, some people like to pick her. So, they love you. Yep, she is very nice. But oh god, there, Halo does get a hook there. There's the Maelstrom and the, and oh the Spike. My. So much damage coming out of Barrel Boys. They're actually going to be able to clear this up. Dreadnought will go down too, and that's a four for zero. They're just going to push that. They're just going to grab the shrines here and try and take the hold of this advantage. And that was a great fight for them. Everything went their way there, except that Tychus was able to run away like a little girly man. <laughs> 
What's wrong, little girly man? <laughs> little girly man, why you run? Man? Didn't have his Odin. Well, ah, that's light. Probably did because it's still up. But uh, a fantastic pickoff. I mean, barrels coming out in the back of that one. I mean, they got the hook on top of Kayo, which means that there was no Ravenous Bear. There was no wa zombie walls whatsoever. The Shock and Awe did amazing amount of damage throughout the entire core there of SMG. And by the time Kayo came back out, they were two man down. This is actually a fantastic position for the barrel because now there's 16. Mercenary, they, they stole as well, was actually helping kill that four. It was great positioning and timing there. They stole the mercs, they got the Dragonite, they got four kills, a fort on top of that. Now they're going in for another tower here. That actually puts them into the experience advantage. And all that early game advantage is now just all for naught here from Cloud9. Yep, and they're looking for another fort here, but everyone from Symbiote is now up. Alts are almost pretty much all down for Barrel Boys here. They need to be so careful. Symbiote, theirs will be coming up far sooner, and they will probably be looking for the re-engagement here. Baytrop using as much of that help as possible. Oh, he gets hooked again! This is so bad. Baytrop keeps holding back the rest Boom. of the There's the shock and awe. KO goes down, and Barrel Boys turning this around. They have pretty much no ults left, but it doesn't matter. They're just charging in. The Devouring War is available. The root hits no one. Four goes down. <laughs> And it's dreadful that is getting hooked. Where is the, I was about to say, where's the Ravenous? He's dead. Face drop using straight to try and oh, take down Dreadnought. Dreadnought is just charging everything. The ball gets three members, but there is the tranquility straight out of it. And everyone gains back all the health they lost from it. Soldier is on the run, gets hooked back in. The Odin will go down. He's able to dodge the root, though, and he will get out of this alive. But down goes another four and all the buildings surrounding it. And Barrel Boys are in control of this game. They're going to start taking Mercs. A very quick turnaround. I mean, within one fight and a Dragon Knight, we are now almost up an entire level instead of being down a level here for the barrels. And now they're getting kills. These hooks are starting to come out huge because that's two fights in a row. Ravenous has just been sitting there idle, not ticking away on cooldown, not adding any kind of damage to the roster by the end of it all. And as soon as we hit 16, look at what Vala has for 16. Executioner. So that now it's going to be fantastic combined with some of the roots here. Roots. From Barrel Boys. And uh, the roots uh, of Kerrigan. Yeah. Yeah, and Kerrigan. It's going to be just mental. Like, if I will be honest, even if they win this game, if Symbiote don't fan Stitch's next game, I just don't know what they're doing. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, this is probably why you see a lot of Stitch's ban, especially <laughs> on these maps. Because if your positioning isn't godlike, you are going to get picked and you are going to go down. And the barrels have finally started making that happen. I mean, the first sets of picks in these games were all on Dreadnought. And we even saw that, you know, the return hook there on Dreadnought in the middle of that fight. He still didn't die. But if you get somebody like Kayo, you get somebody like um, Brightwing, like Mad Timmy, oh, you are going to have a field day. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think they fought that. You can see there they fought Symbiote, was still pushing up, but Symbiote. Making the correct decision, backing up and playing it safe. Right, already in position to grab the shrine. The rest of the team getting ready to contest mid or bottom and try and grab some of the members of a. Uh some of the members of Paraboids as they head up to that top lane. Brightwing has come down as well. They're already and look at where KO is positioned. He was like, I don't want to get hooked. Yeah, not whatsoever. <laughs> he, he is he is three blocks away from this fight. Oh, here we go. Here is the fight. Yeah, he's trying to position. Curse Fury, his hook is still up. There is the polymorph on him. Odin has been used. And where is that? He's trying to position himself. He's not even used to position. There it is. Finally seeing the Ravenous Spirit, and he's getting the damage down. He's used it into the Tranquility, though. The 50 is healing back along that damage. There's the ward. Doesn't hit anyone. And we did see Kerrigan go down, though. But can they get the counter kill to Soldier? Yes, they do. And that is a one-for-one. One. Barrel Boys still doing pretty well. They're going to be able to grab this bottom shrine. And Falstead, can, I believe he has fly. Yes, he does. He can fly up to this top lane to grab that shrine. And that might be another Dragon Knight. But instead, they're going to contest these mercenaries. Yeah, and well, contesting the mercs before the Dragon Knight comes out, I mean, if they do got that fly, he can fly up there at any point. There's absolutely nobody really in position. There he goes. As I say that, Kayo is actually going to be trying to do her best to get up here as quick as he can, but well, there's trouble. Yeah, we're in position. This could literally be a, a level 20 resulting oh, on, dragon. Good use the roaches there to deny this, and Blink's busy going to root down Arthalon. Base drop trying to grab it. Arthalon just too slow. The double hunter killer, though, is going to chase Blink's away. Can he get out of range? He should be fine. Arthalon oh, gets hooked by Fury. He will chase it down. Dreadnought's there as well. The root goes down on the both of them, and we are going to see Arthalon get out of there and incubate himself 
back up to pretty much full health. Full health, yeah. That, that's the problem with putting those on top of healer types. I mean, they can just almost shrug it off. But, you know, you throw those on top of, you know, Fury, you put it on top of Trommel, Equinox, yeah. They're going to have a little bit more of a bad time. Either way, that's now the second dragon coming out here for the Barrel Boys. And there's no forts here to have to stop them. One shot the wall. You can get right into the back there if you really need to. And now we're just kind of dancing, putting up the damage. we got 40 seconds left on this Dragon Knight. This gate, I'm not entirely too sure this gate's actually going to go down. Base drop is just Literally. draining. He's just draining the ammo. Oh, he's left. Oh, he's not draining the ammo. Oh. He's draining his kid to that oh. connection. He's moving in. This is a bit risky from the disconnected <laughs> dragon fight here. Fury is just moving in with him. Where is it going? Oh, good <laughs> lord, no. no. This is bad no, for Barrel he's Boys. Terrible. He's now playing. No. He's like, where the hell am I? He's trying to back out of there. That dragon, like, completely wasted. Going in, using the strafe, but cancelled by the Emerald Wind. In comes the Ravenous Spirit. But base drop. It's pretty much dead here. He did go down, and we also lost Mount Fury in the worst timing on the disconnect. Oh. Devastating for Barrel Boys. Soldier, though, might suffer for chasing too far. He gets gored and took the overdrive damage. And, oh, best timing with the transport. We'll see Equinox turn around there, but chooses to blink out trouble. Able to escape. Soldier escapes, and it was only the two we saw die in the base. Or has got the hook there. But that was the worst timing. He's dropping hands in his head right now. Wait, no. H head in his hands right now. <laughs> hands in his head. It's good. <laughs> That's enough for you. <laughs> Level 20 hype does come out, though, for the barrels. They got this small little window before SMG does ding 20, but now it is gone. Uh, in terms of everything else, Resurgence on the tanks, uh, Blinks on the DPS. We do got the Storm Shield on not both of our supports. Oh, right, because Continuous Winds will be coming out there. Uh, for the bright wings so nothing really out of the ordinary that really stupidly long range annihilating spirit is going to come out as well so continuing with the good positioning here from kayo you will continue to stack the damage but i think we're not really going to be seeing too many uh more hooks on top of him yeah this is uh kayo is playing so safe now to avoid this kind of thing happening again but Good lord, you've got to feel bad if you are Barrel Boys in this situation, but they are doing their absolute best to bring it back. They still have the XP lead. Uh, shrines will be coming up very soon. Symbio are going to be using this time to grab the bottom bruisers, and their easy camp is still up as well. Look at the damage numbers between these two teams. So even coming back from uh, side to side. I mean, right now it is Nazebo topping the charts here for SMG, but at the same time, it's Falstead with 38,000. Top of the game as well. Look at that siege damage on top of it. Pyramid it's and Valor. that far ahead. Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. not even that far ahead of Valor with 37,000 hero damage and 100,000 siege damage. Barrel Boys, the damage they are throwing out is incredible. Absolutely. 100%. Um, so, level 20s from both sides. I mean, th we don't really see a huge amount of games go past level 20, level 21 in the, in the NA side, but I'm really not entirely too sure who to call it for here in, in this game. It's the like, early game, uh, Symbiote had some amazing stuff done, and they took some really big leads, but now late game, Barrel Boys have really come into their own, and now both teams level 20, they're fully powered up. I, I still don't really know which way this is going to flow. Yeah, your approach and you didn't know it. Right now, oh, though, we're seeing yeah, Symbiote getting a bit of a push on this top plane. That fort actually taking a lot of damage, and they're beginning to rotate down to this bottom lane. Where and they're gonna run straight into Barrel Boy there. Dreadnought taking the front of that rabbit is able to be used. There is the straight in the back as well, but Emerald Wind is gonna cancel that out very nice. And the Mort, the Barrack Mort, was able to catch out uh, Blinks, who will go down here. And Kerrigan also went down in the back. Base drop and trouble just running away. Down goes Fury too, and Symbio dominating that fight. Absolutely. Yeah, two kills right there. I mean, Arthalon was so low for so much of that fight but he was able to actually get out just in the nick of time both times. Trommel's actually going to fly up top. He does not have anything really to worry about, uh, but yeah, Kayo is actually not going to be able to pick up this uh, Dragonite because of those uh, arcane arrows from base. So yeah, we are going to prevent the SMG Dragonite as we're waiting for some of these uh, respawn timers to come up. But once again, no, SMG, they're really, really good at team fighting. Yep, Symbiote been doing such a good job in these team fights. They are ahead 14 kills to 8. 
And just having a look at the damage tab, they are beginning to catch up here. They're still quite a bit behind uh, Vala and Azu, uh, Vala and uh, Valstad here, but looks like they're going to get a Dragon Knight, which might turn this curse. Usually the one catching out KO has been caught out by KO and is now being chased out by Soldier, but there's the strafe. Might kill off Soldier, but Soldier able to dash away and get the speed boost from Brightwing to save him. Dragon Knight was taken by Arthur and he will get this middle fort. Yeah, middle fort is now going to be down, and that is all the tier one bastions now dead in the water. Uh, we Oh, no, that's a lie. Top is actually still alive, but in fact, we're going to use the Dragon Knight to clean up this bottom lane push. Not a terrible way to go. I mean, we see that a lot with the Garden of Terror, for example. But, uh, of course, you do got flower pots to, to do it there. Equinox is going to get caught out by that stray flame breath. Arslan's like, yeah, I'm not going to allow you to do that whatsoever. Uh, we're just biding time because Soldier needs to kind of catch up and join the fight. But this could be a keep if SMG plays it right. Yeah, they can play it right. Curse Fury is here, though. Sorry, just Fury looking for his moment to try and maybe catch someone out. There's the pump from the Dragon Knight. Tries to hook it, because if you do that in the charge up, it does cancel the pump up. It's just a bit too slow. And down goes that keep. No way that is staying alive there. Dreadnought's going to be the one who gets the final blow. No deaths yet in this particular fight. And this is getting very interesting. Well, we still oh, There is the hook onto Dreadnought. Yeah, he's no, you're right. He is rooted, there is the strafe coming down. Dreadnought just tagging everything though. Ravenous Spirit is being used on the core. They are just ignoring the enemy team and going straight to the core. Symbio might be able to take this and this is not enough damage coming out there. It's not a thing I thought I'd say about this Barrel Boys comp. But we are going to see Symbio taking game number one. Everybody, every blue team so far has won on our stream. <laughs> <laughs> every blue Blizzard team. Blizzard fixed the color blue. <laughs> But once again, you know, Symbiote Gaming, these guys have been the reigning kings literally forever. Um, they have had some rocky moments, you know, the first losses up against Cloud9 Maelstrom, the first loss of a cup. But Symbiote Gaming, now that they're back to full strength with Dreadnought back here, it's phenomenal stuff to watch. Now, Barrel Boys put up a heck of a fight, a heck of a fight. But what happened there, the turning point? I got to say, you know, when Base Drop lost that connection with that Dragon Knight, that was not a good moment. Yeah, that was the turning point in the game. Barrow Boys played so well, but now they have another chance to bring it back for them. That was only game number one. They still have a potentially two more games left. They do, yeah. I mean, we have now seen our first best of three actually going to three with Clairvoyant up against Glorious. And uh, here in the semis, you know, the winner of this will move on to finals. Both these teams have qualified for the majors, but now it's all about the bragging, the, the bragging rights, the cash, the money, the swag, you know, beautiful women seeds. everywhere. Seeds. Um, <laughs> yeah, like, so, to the hero scene. <laughs> yeah, the seeds. That's exactly uh, exactly it. So SMG and Barrel Boys, what can Barrel Boys do in game number two? Because I think they had absolutely the right idea here in game number one. We'll have to see what they can bring to the table because we're going to take a quick break, set it uh, on quickly, up. Before we, head to the, before we head to the break, I just yep. quickly refresh the ESL bracket and yep. Clairvoyant beat out Glorious. The top seed does not move on. That is incredible. Clairvoyant, Hook Lana, Clown. Um, I don't actually remember who else is on Clairvoyant at the top of my head. <laughs> Fantastic work, guys. Congratulations. Um, that sucks for Glorious, though. Wow. They got really number does. one seed. They got a buy in the first round, and then they lose their first best of three. That sucks. But the better team moves on, I suppose. Best of threes. Uh, and as we as said, when we return, game number two here of this best of three uh, will continue for Cordester and Tetri.